Today on Maker's Mashup, the Endoscope. Feared by men over 50, I'm going to show you how to use it for your 3D printer. So bad jokes aside, the endoscope is actually a really great tool for your 3D printer. And surprisingly enough, I don't see enough people using it. The real advantage for your endoscope is that you're able to see the nozzle as you're actually printing. And it's really a great way for you to see adhesion problems. You're also able to see problems with extrusion. You're able to see that your print's going much better. Uh, especially when you're starting off with your first couple of layers of your 3D print. There's a lot of people that will look at the first layer, try to see if they can see adhesion taking place. The endoscope rules all of that out, and it's actually pretty easy to set up. Uh, I'm going to show you two different ways to set it up today. The first way is going to be where you can actually just look at it on your cell phone, and then the second way I'm going to show you is how to hook it up to OctoPrint. So you can either take advantage of using this only on your phone, which requires no modifications to Octoprint, or you can use this in Octoprint, and we'll cover that later in the video. So let's get to work. The first thing you're going to want to do is head out to Thingiverse and download this model. I created this model so that way it would fit on the front of the Ender 3, which is typically space that is unused and it also allows for fan access as well so you shouldn't have any reduction of airflow to the hot end. First thing you're going to want to do to install it is to remove the top fan screw from the front of the printer. The next step is to install the mount. You'll need a slightly longer screw. In this case I used an M312 and with this screw, you've probably got an extra one from your original install of your Ender 3 printer or CR10. You want to install this so that way it fits snugly, but don't over tighten it as to crack the bracket. Next step is to install the camera into the front of the mount, and you're going to want to orient the camera so that way it is upright and the nozzle is pointing down, so it's helpful to have the camera on at this point. Attach the zip ties on top, and this will hold the cable in place and keep the camera from shifting around. Be sure to use both of the zip tie holes that are available on the mount. This will hold the camera tightly in place. Clip off the excess zip tie, and then you're going to want to attach the rest of the camera cord to the wire loom. Make sure that when you're attaching the cord to the wire loom that you leave enough slack in the loom itself so that way you're not binding up your Bowden tube. Just zip tie it all the way back to the extruder. Now just plug the USB cable into your phone. Note that most of these are a mini USB and I know that a lot of modern phones are USB-C so you may need an adapter to make this work. You can see I'm doing this with an Android phone. The process for an Apple phone would be very similar. I think you'll agree that just installing the mount and the endoscope is a pretty simple process, but I wanted something a little bit more complex as I wanted to have mine installed all the time and available through Octoprint. Log into your Raspberry Pi and at the shell prop, you're going to want to do a directory of dev slash vid star and you're going to want to find the different video devices that you have there and then you're going to need that for the next step which is going to be editing your rc.local file in the Etsy directory. This next step will take a little bit of trial and error. You're going to want to edit the rc.local file, and then you're going to want to add this line here with MJPEG Streamer. That is exactly the same application that the Raspberry Pi uses for the primary cam. So the secondary cam, you're going to want to use Dev Video 1 or Dev Video. It will depend on the video device that you have installed. 
You're also going to want to make sure that you set the resolution correctly. You can see here I've got a higher resolution. Some cams only do 320 by 200 and it will vary. Once you have this in place, then it will uh, start the cam up and you're going to want to make sure that you have it on a different port. So if you're using 8080 currently, you may want to use 8081. It's going to take a little bit of trial and error to get this piece down, but this should be the only line that you have to add into your software or into the Raspberry Pi uh, at the command prompt. Once this is in place, then you should be able to go directly to the HTTP port uh, that has the webcam, and I will show this in Octoprint. I've also included this line in the description, so you'll have that information as well. In Octoprint, you're going to want to go into the settings and then you're going to want to go down to the plugin manager and then you're going to want to search for a plugin called Multicam. I actually can't find it in the repository because I've already installed it. So uh, it is called Multicam and it will show up in this list of plugins if you don't already have it installed. Once you get Multicam installed, then you're going to see that you have the ability here to specify multiple cams. The nozzle camera here is going to be your second camera. Now you can use this URL here and it's actually 8080 is generally the port that will be the one for your primary one. And then this is going to be what you set up in rc.local. So once you have multicam installed, you're just going to want to go ahead and fill in information that's like this. It's going to depend greatly on your particular installation of Octoprint. Once you have your nozzle configured correctly, you should be able to go to your control tab and then under webcams, you can see your secondary nozzle camera is now installed and that should be all there is to it. Well, that's it for this video. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget, please subscribe and click that bell for instant notifications on our new videos. If you want to chat with other makers, don't forget to join our Discord. We've got a Discord where you can chat with other makers about your projects, different things that you're working on, or even ask questions about 3D printing and other topics. You can find out more about our Discord on our website at makersmashup.com, or you can see more information on our Twitter, and it's Makers Mashup as well. Hey, thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.